What's going on, man? How are you? I'm good, man. It's nice to be in New York. It's nice to be back here. Yeah. I feel like I'm, you know, coming to somewhere familiar. Do you guys like those st- the streaming services now? It's like if you do a movie, you can, it can be in the theater or there's like so many other places for it to come out. You must kind of like the extra options. Yeah, I guess. It's um, it's an interesting time. Everything's really changing, you know. And, and before, obviously, a movie was something you saw in the theater and now that's not necessarily the case. But um, I think this will get a, 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 a slight release. I've had a slight release of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they put it out in theaters like limited or whatever. Right. Yeah, so, so it that it can get considered for, for yeah. awards and stuff like that. Does it like, did you like, do you still have the premieres and all that stuff or have those, have those kind of gone away when something like this happens? Yeah. I mean, this, this is getting a premiere. I'm going to be on holiday, so I'm going to miss it. But yeah, it's because it's a big thing. It's the first animation from Skydance Animation. It's the first kind of Apple TV Plus exclusive movie. So, um, animation. So it's, uh, yeah, it's getting a bit of a fanfare, which is nice. Not that I'll be there. I'll be on a beach in Greece. Oh, yeah. Like release. <laughs> yeah. You're pretty good because you uh, at, at flying under the radar. I don't think people like, uh, associate you with the fact that like you're part of multiple franchises I like know. you're a franchise guy i'm a franchise whore yeah <laughs> Which, I, I, i'm not meaning to be you know it just kind of happened i mean it's a pretty sweet gig where you're like okay i mean i guess they're gonna need me to do this and they're gonna need it me isn't to do it that. isn't you know you kind of you, you 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 sign up for stuff and then like with mission impossible we've been shooting that since september 2020 and obviously the pandemic's had a big effect on the shoot but we've been soldiering on and it's going to be amazing and we've finished the first they were doing two back to back oh wow so now i'm on number eight until like october next year so that you're kind of stuck with it you know right and as fun as it sounds, it can get a little tedious. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, were you there? Were you there uh, with all those COVID protocols and stuff like that? Like they had to stop a couple of times, right? Yeah, we had we had a couple of shutdowns. You know, it just was inevitable at the beginning. But um, we kind of invented the whole co- the whole COVID protocol well, right. system. Right, right, yeah, know? yeah. And um, and we did okay. It's it's you know, I mean, it, it, it's a pain in the ass, but we, we we managed it. Yeah, people got mad at Tom Cruise, but it was like you're trying to keep a production going. It's like, well, that was interesting because they they released that audio, I think, as a kind of a you know like like a fuck you to Tom, and then it actually everyone was going, no, fair enough. He was sort of standing up for the people he's employing, and you know he had a he had a big old shout, but basically what he was saying was correct, you know. Yeah. It was an interesting one. It's wild, though. I saw the thing that you put on your Instagram about like that. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you about Tom Cruise anymore because it, because I, <laughs> because I read the, I read the headline right that was like Simon Pegg is out here and he's giving Tom Cruise big secrets away, and then I read the quotes and I'm like. This is like an anecdote. This is know, a, like know, a like funny a story of a thing. The trouble is because everybody wants to be the authority on him, and because he doesn't engage, anyone who gets close to him, they want stuff from... So you say the slightest thing, some story, and you think, oh, they want to know about work, and you tell... But no, no, it's a story that they want to put. It's a, it's a clickbait story. Yeah. yeah, They can put his name in the title. Everything's mad at the moment because of Top Gun being so huge, so... You know, yeah. What is it like when he's on the set? Because I've never met him, but I imagine they said even in Hollywood, there's like levels of, of, of like celebrity. And he said like when Jack Nicholson was on the set for um, a few, a good, few men. good men, everybody yeah. kind of felt it. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, he, yeah. Him and everybody else because it was Jack Nicholson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's kind of how it is with him. Well, he's a, he's a real sort of team player on when it comes to the to the filmmaking process. So you know, he he knows everyone's name, and it's not like, oh, shit, here he comes, you know, he's kind of just, here he is, you know, we all get ready to work when he's there, because, you know, it's, uh, he gives a, a 100% and expects us to, so we all, like, put our cigarettes out and stop getting off with each other and start working. You know? <laughs> Who are you yeah. playing? <laughs> Me? Yeah. In Mission? Yes. I play a character called Benji Dunn, who's like a kind of human sat-nav. <laughs> what I do is give him uh, directions. Okay. And, and reveal aspects of the plot to the audience in a, oh, nice. in so a humorous you, way. So it's a good part. It's great, yeah. yeah. I've been doing it since, like, number three, which is 2006. So I've been on these movies for, like, 16 years. and um, I should probably see them. Honestly. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was No, I, 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 I did see... When you were like, what part are you playing? I was like, well... No, I don't remember. <laughs> I, I, hopefully I, the same one. I, like, it'd be really I weird. I did see... Uh, <laughs> The one where he was on the Burj Khalifa, yeah. so I'm afraid of heights. So that was fucking terrifying. Well, you should see the 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 following films five six are uh, were directed by Chris McQuarrie, and I mean, you know, I know I'm in these and I'm biased, but these films kind of defy the law of diminishing returns. They get better right. rather than worse, and that's yeah. a pretty rare thing to be able to do, I think. Yeah, yeah. Do you? So do you? Is it more pressure to be a part of one of those kind of you know billion dollar 
franchise movies or to be doing something where it's all you like you know when when you're the writer co-writer oh, yeah. co-director like when you're when this is your baby and, and you're kind of responsible or when you're a piece of this giant thing that people are depending it's on you for it's much more stressful like when me and edgar release a film that's right. all, that's all on us you know right whereas with mission you can if, yeah. it, if, it's, if it's not very good you can just not that it ever isn't very good it seems to be great it ain't gonna fall on your shoulders yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. i can just sort of disown it straight away wash my hands no sorry but yeah. with the other stuff. Were you yeah. on set when he was running down the uh, face of the, uh, of the of the building? Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> the, the fact the insurance, I can't stop thinking, how do they allow, what I, do you have to go through to get the biggest star in Hollywood to, to run down that, that face of that I building? I get asked that a lot, and I honestly don't know. I think maybe he underwrites it or something. Like, he broke his ankle on the last one. Yeah. And that was the first time he'd kind of injured himself and obviously lost his no claims bonus on his insurance policy. But, um, <laughs> you know, we had to, the, the weird thing was is that he's running along, he jumps these two, he jumps between these buildings, he hits the wall, and he put his leg out to steady himself, which wasn't in the kind of like, the, the, the list of things he had to do to do this stunt. And the minute he kind of deviated, broke his ankle. And you see it in the film, he gets up and he limps out of shot. And that was him being a producer, not an actor. That was him knowing if he didn't clear the shot, it was gonna cost the production millions and millions of dollars. So he limps out on a shattered liquid ankle. I Wait, guess that, by the way, this this answers the original question, which was like, what's easier? When you don't have to worry about how you ensure no, exactly. your star is yeah. running down buildings, it's probably yeah. easier to not, not have my to problem. do that. Yeah. Why would it have cost millions of dollars? You mean because they wouldn't have had any of this shot or because- they would have had to go back and reshoot the scene again and the, the, the logistics of not completing that moment would have just caused a, a huge headache. Oh, okay. So, so he managed to kind of, you know, and then he just collapsed and- and then the doctor told him he, he wasn't. He, was po he could possibly never run again. And then, really, yeah, he said you wouldn't. You probably won't walk for nine months. You won't sprint, perhaps ever. Nine weeks later, <laughs> <laughs> he's sprinting across the top of the bridge in London. So, what do you Wild. do when that happens? I guess do you, do you pick up and shoot other scenes around, or do you just go home for a month and a half? Yeah, we had to shut down for a little while and uh, do what we could without him. But we got around it, and um, you know, there, there was an insurance claim, I guess, and. But these things happen. I mean, yeah. it's amazing that it was something as innocuous as a broken ankle. Yeah, especially on, on one of them was like on the side of a plane. Yeah, and he rode off a cliff on a motorbike in, <laughs> in Seven. Like, I mean... Of course, why wouldn't you, <laughs> right? Yeah. As it, one does. If you watch the trailer, they, they actually put it in the trailer because part of the, I think the, the, the appeal of these movies is that the stunts are real. That's the kind of mantra. Yeah. And at the end of the trailer, you see he rides off a cliff on a motorbike, drops the motorbike, and then just falls out of shot. And then obviously I'm the parachute at some point. Yeah. yeah. That's what made Jackie Chan so popular too. People yeah, love the yeah, fact yeah. that he did his own oh, stunts. That really is the a selling king. point. Yeah, he's absolutely yeah. the best at that. When you uh, started doing stuff with Star Wars, were you like, hey, you guys know I'm in Star Trek too, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, can, can, I don't know if I'm allowed to... <laughs> cross the streams. Yeah, can I cross streams here? <laughs> well, it was J.J. Abrams who was doing it. He kind of... Because I was a bit... When I found out that J.J. was doing Star Wars, Yeah, I remember I was watching a... I got the, an email. And I felt kind of jealous, you know. I was like, "Oh, Dad's leaving us for the other kids," you know, because he he directed Star Trek. Of course, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like, "Oh, right, he's gonna fuck off to Star Wars now, is he? That's nice." But then we had dinner, and he said, "Oh, do you want to come and play a blobfish?" And I was like, "Sure." Yeah, so it's <laughs> good. yeah, yeah. All, all the kind of jealousy or whatever goes <laughs> away. You're like, "Yeah, no, it'll be us." Then. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Fuck those guys. The first time I saw Star Trek, I thought it was terrible, but then I realized I was on a bootleg copy. I, I was at somebody's house, and they had a bootleg. So I'm like, "These camera angles are so bad." <laughs> like they're zooming in on the fucking legs. I'm like, what are they doing? Yeah. And then I found out like a year later, I'd watched the bootleg copy and I Somebody saw it again. I was like, filming it with a, with a, a camera. That was exactly what it was. Yeah. I, I just didn't make sense how poorly it was shot. You like, didn't wow. realize that. That's hilarious. <laughs> no, I didn't. It was my friend who had a projection screen in his house. Oh. I thought he was above that. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I do love the idea of putting a bootleg on a projection screen. Dude, I was furious when I found out that I wasted two hours watching a bootleg of a movie. I love it. Um, Star Trek's continuing, right? Are they going to? I think so. I mean, as far as I know, they're 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 planning a fourth one. I don't know when that's going to happen. That 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 depends on everyone's availability, obviously syncing up, and also, I mean, I'm on mission until next right. year, late next year. I don't know when we'll do it, but. Apparently. Well, late next year they're shooting? Yeah, it looks, sounds like it, yeah. 
That's, that's got to be nice to know you have it. Like, and you're always going to work, but stability. just to know, like, to know exactly what you're doing for the next it year. It isn't. It isn't. The one thing that is frustrating is that I've got a lot of things I want to do, and and you know, me and Edgar want to write a new film together, mm. and there's a possibility of doing some theater yeah. and there's this and that and and you kind of like your dance card is just booked out so you're a bit stuck oh you like doing theater i'm gonna do some yeah have you not for a long 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 time but something's come up and i kind of want to do it seems difficult theater compared to i mean regular acting is hard but theater just seems like so there's just no room to redo it yeah with your stand-up you can kind of riff it and and work your way back to your your material but with a play if you forget the line it's yes like, and, and like if i if i fuck up a joke right but it happens all the time and you just address it you make fun of it you move forward but i'm always like watching guys like what do you do if you forget like do the other actors like will pick you up but what do you do if you just blank yeah i mean i know it's such an amateur question but it's what terrifies me about and theater. Also, like f phones going off now it's still a problem people never peter o'toole told a really funny story about when he played hamlet <laughs> and there was a bit in in the in this in this in the you know one of the famous soliloquies when he runs down right to the front of the stage vengeance <laughs> like this into this huge flourish and he got to the bottom of the stage and he, some guy in the front row just went <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Peter O'Toole went oh piss off <laughs> <laughs> the guy left. <laughs> what is it about that he just dropped character completely? I'll oh, piss off. Uh, <laughs> that's great. My favorite Peter O'Toole thing was Caligula. Did you ever see Caligula? Oh, that's a mad film, isn't it? And he played uh, Tiberius, which is such an odd movie to get like guys like him, Malcolm McDowell. And, uh, well, they didn't know. Like A lot of the actors didn't know what was going on. Like yeah. the, None the real of them. actors would go home, and they'd be like, okay, now let's do okay, all the porn. Get, yeah. get naked. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, oh, my God, uh, Helen Mirren. Yeah. They had like, yeah, a yeah. tremendous cast. She was very sexy in that. She still is. Yeah. She's yeah. lovely. Very yeah. chesty. Yeah. Are you, does it like uh... <laughs> she's got a, do you mean she's got a cough is that what you're talking about <laughs> I think that's probably we can save it we can save it with that <laughs> does it blow your mind that like uh, like you've you've done so many films and so many giant films and, and, and you've you've written and you've directed you've done everything since then but still to this day I'm sure uh, all the time people just bring up Shaun of the Dead still. Oh, yeah, and I'm happy about that. Yeah, you know, I would like, have to imagine. Yeah, it's it was our kind of debut, really, and it's certainly our debut over here in the States. That was yeah. how we, um, you know, we arrived here, which is a nice way to arrive. But I can't imagine that when you were making it, you were like, this is the one that lasts forever. No, we didn't even know if it would be ever, anyone would see it. Do you know right. what I mean? We thought it might be on, we might get it on DVD, maybe. Yeah. And it might be on at the cinema for a week in, in, in the UK. We never knew it would come over here. But yeah, I still get asked. It. People are still going to do a, a Shaun of the Dead too. No, <laughs> <laughs> of course not. <laughs> why? why, 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 why? <laughs> I think sometimes people don't know what else to say about something, so they just ask, like, hey, "Is that coming back?" Yeah. Like, no, it's not. Yeah, and all, people want the same thing again and again. Yeah. That's the thing is that I mean, cine uh, the cinema kind of caters to that urge now because we do just see the same thing again and again. What are you a fan of now? Because I feel like all you're like you're a part of so much fan culture but you do it like it's become your professional yeah, yeah life yeah. like is there anything that you're like this is what i geek out over i watch a lot of korean television at the moment huh. and the reason is is because my daughter is a mad sort of k-pop fan uh -huh. and and she loves sort of korean culture we watch a lot of there's a lot of k-dramas on on netflix mm -hmm. and they're really great there's some not just squid game we were kind of you know into it before squid game happened but um yeah we sort of geek out over because I don't know there's a weird tonal difference with their dramas sometimes they can be like we watched this one called Vincenzo and it was like this this Korean guy who had been a, a, a mafia consigliere in Italy comes back to to Seoul and he saves this little community of people but it was like it would be really funny then horribly violent then really upsetting and then really moving and it, they, there's no it's sort like of my tonal... relationship <laughs> <laughs> yeah like no tonal consistency uh, but so that um, I'm really enjoying the boys at the moment, and as, as is that some... a superhero movie? No, it's, uh, it's a, a TV show? series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Matt Sarah always talks about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's really popular. It's on Amazon. Yeah, I when the comic came out, the guy that designed that drew it designed one of the characters, Huey, as me, and so I kind of had this bizarre kind of guest role in a comic that I, you know, someone told me about it, and then I wrote to the guy and said, "Oh, this is cool, thanks, man." And then DC, who published it at the time before they dropped it because it's too fucking out there you know it's really extreme as is the show um wrote to me and begged me not to sue them <laughs> oh, really? I like, oh, I don't know. I like, this is nice anyway so when they did the tv show jack quaid plays huey in the tv show but I, they invited me to play his dad as a kind of you know as oh, a, that's great. a little nod to the comic 
So, um, so, but despite being in it, it's you'd love it, man. It's so outrageous. It it, it goes places you would never expect. I heard nothing but good things about it. Yeah, everybody loves it's it. It's brilliant. I'm not big on superhero culture at all, but this show I'm aware of because everybody is uh, talking. Well, it's a sort of a takedown of it all. You know, it's oh. kind of it's it, it it's a very timely takedown of the whole superhero thing, suggesting that if they really did exist, they'd be assholes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> kind of cool. And how, by the way, how does the letter go when they're asking you not to sue them? That's a pretty ballsy thing for a uh, a studio well, to was, send it, it out. Was in not so many words. It was like, "Hey, Simon, would you mind signing this uh, waiver for your likeness rights?" And uh, <laughs> just you know, cause, yeah, you know. just kind of some lawyer just really. Good. If we say it like this, he'll never know that we kind of ripped him off. Were you hesitant, or were you like, "Ah, oh, I didn't care." Yeah. It was kind of fun, you know. I felt like pretty uh, flattered that this guy had uh, given me a kind of role in a comic. Yeah, I was big into comics at the time, so it was like. It felt great. I'm sure there are people, though, that would be like, oh, this is really flattering. This is really cool. I can sue for this? Yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> I remember on the set of Star Trek Into Darkness w working with Peter Weller, and there's a great British sort of hip-hop track from the from 1990 called Sil uh, called 20 Seconds to Comply. It's by Silver Bullet. It's an, we used it in the World's End, in the fight scene in the World's End. And it's got loads of samples from Robocop. I was like, hey, Pete, listen to this. It's great. It's got your voice in it and stuff. He was like, I'm gonna sue those fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I thought you'd be happy. It's cool, you know. Peter Weller was my professor at Syracuse. He taught uh, the Roman Empire through film. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a he's a he's a, a, a really interesting guy. He's incredible. He's like so obsessed with the Roman Empire and everything through film that the idea it was like a three hour lecture, but you were supposed to watch a movie, and then like in the lecture, and then he would we would kind of discuss it as a class after. He would spend the entire three hour lecture talking. Yeah. And I'll then go, talk. you know what I mean? Like, he'd spend the entire time talking and go, like, oh, you guys are going to have to watch the movie, like, during, yeah, yeah, like yeah. during the week. We'll come back next week and discuss it. But it would be like, yeah. <laughs> What's a great Roman movie? What, what, what would he consider a oh, great movie about Rome? Like ben Hur, probably, or yeah. El Cid, something like that. I mean, we watched everything. Jesus Christ Superstar was on the, on the list of movies that we watched. Anything that was even remotely tied wow. to it. Right. Yeah. The Life of Brian. Oh, yeah, God. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> That's probably the, you want that baby. It's yeah, such a very funny film. Um, yeah, the uh, the best, I, I can't really watch Shakespeare, but watching Brando do Shakespeare was always good. I don't know how like uh, like real Shakespearean actors feel about that, but I, I, him I could watch do it for some reason. It felt yeah, yeah. enjoyable. Shakespeare's weird because you watch it and you don't have any kind of immediate understanding of what's being said, but you somehow manage to, by osmosis, understand what's going on. Yeah. It can be, you know, I saw Ian McKellen do King Lear, and that was amazing. And then I saw him do Hamlet recently. They did, they did an age-blind Hamlet. So he played Hamlet. He's 85. <laughs> and when Hamlet's older than his mum and dad, the whole sort of <laughs> Oedipal thing goes out the window. You know what I mean? yeah. <laughs> it was a bit strange. Yeah, this seems far more appropriate than I remember it being. Um, who do you think, uh, who have you found has the hardest uh, fans to please when you're like jumping into the franchises between Doctor Who, yeah. Star Trek, Star Wars. I mean, these are people who, who take these licenses very, very seriously. To be honest, and as someone who kind of was, you know, kicked off about the prequels in the uh, in, when they came out, the Star Wars fan base really seems to be the most kind of toxic at the moment. I'm probably mm. being very <laughs> controversial to say that. I, I mean, I'm out of it now. I'm not, I don't sort of, I've apologized for the things I said about, you know, Jar Jar Binks, because of course there was a fucking actor involved yeah. there and he was getting a lot of flack and it wasn't a, you know, a, a, a camp rabbit. It was a human being. Right. And 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 because it got a lot of hate, he, he, he suffered, you know, and I feel terrible about being part of that, you know, in space in our comedy show. My character was always ragging on those films, but really that was just me talking about how much I didn't like them. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I find the Star Trek fans have always been very, very, inclusive you know star trek's about diversity it has been since 1966 it always was there's no sort of like oh you're suddenly being woke now star was star trek was woke from the beginning you know yeah he had a japanese uh navigator at a, at a, just after the second world war you know there was a black woman on the deck in a position of authority this is massively progressive Star Wars suddenly there's there's a, a little bit more diversity and everyone's kicking off about it and it's <laughs> it's really sad you know yeah well you know what's not sad is this movie, Luck. The new movie comes out August 5th exclusively on Apple TV+. Plus. I'm excited because I'm always looking for new animated movies to show my kids because they they'll, will go through it. them. That's great. It's such a lovely movie. It's really I play a, a, a lucky cat, 
and uh, it all takes place in this weird world of where luck's generated and it's it's one of those films that you can watch it with your kids and you'll get something from it too you know and I'll tell you that uh, Apple TV Plus uh, with their live action they've they won Best Picture, so no pressure. Yeah. No pressure. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, thank you, Good Simon Pegg. You, You're great. You too, uh, come back soon, and uh, we'll be right back. Yep. Stay there.